this is Dr. Emily Schoening with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Nevada. With this forecast, we'll have completed our state level breakdown of the Southwestern region. You should expect a ranked video in the next few weeks. We'll sum up what we've learned through these deeper state level dives, and we'll let you know the states with the worst and the best outlooks. We'll be attempting to do that in a more edited, professional looking video. We'll see how that goes. But back to Nevada. My friends, I wanna be honest with you, this state is looking at a rough ride. Let's look at the historical information first. If we look in the federal report in the NCA, we can see that from 1901 to 2016, Nevada has been in one of the areas where we've seen some pretty serious increases in temperature already. And as we look into the projections for the future, that will increase. The first thing that I think that we ought to take a look at is going to be our proxy for winter lows, our plant hardiness zone maps. Let's take a second and get over there. So this is from the USDA, and we can see what the plant hardiness zones in Nevada have been historically from 1980 to 2009. Unsurprisingly, there's a pretty broad range where in the mountains you have a cold, snowy winter, and the conservation of these blue areas is going to be a good proxy for the conservation of your snowpack. In some of our population centers, like in the Reno Carson City area, you have a relatively mild winter, but it's going to be snowy up in the mountains. And in Las Vegas, we know the, the winters are pretty warm. It's pretty warm there year round right now. So let's look at 2050 under the RCP 4.5 scenario, looking at a very moderate doable reduction in emissions. So the first thing that I notice is that we have a pretty serious shrinking and fragmentation of those plant hardiness zones, those blue areas up in the mountains. That's not going to be good for our ability to maintain snowpack over the winter. Let's look in at some of the populated areas over here in our Carson City area, looking at the forecast today. And in 2050, we see relatively little change in that area. That's going to be good for your mature plants, for your trees in the area. If they're hanging on now, they'll have the winter to recuperate. They'll have the winter will feel fairly normal. Going back to contemporary data. And let's go down to Las Vegas. We've got some warm plant hardiness zones there. Let's see what zone we're in. We're talking about zone nine and zone 10, and we've got a little bit of zone 11 down there, kind of in the heart of the desert. Let's see what's going to happen in 2050. You notice that that extreme part of the desert around Bullhead City is really growing, right? And it looks like in general, plant hardiness zones are changing enough in this lower elevation area that you'll feel it, that the winters will be notably warmer. So let's stop sharing that and take a look over at our heat map. That's another resource from the USDA. In the summer in Nevada, I'm going to warn you before we click on it, we're looking at one of the more dramatic heat ups that we've seen. We can see that this is also about his, from historical data from the 80s to 2009. The blue indicates a cooler summer. And the numbers here are how many days a year you have over 86 degrees. So it doesn't surprise us in Las Vegas, we have a lot of days over 86 degrees, right? Carson City, a cooler population center. And then in the rest of the state, it can be a cooler summer up in the mountains, a warmer summer down in the valleys. Let's look at what's going to happen in, um, under the RCP 4.5 scenario as we approach mid-century. You can see very dramatic changes. All of your lower elevation areas are gonna see profound changes. If you look a closer in for some of our smaller communities, like there's Elko now, there's Elko in the future, dramatic heat up, like two months more of temperatures over 86 a year. Let's check out Carson City and Reno. These are areas that currently enjoy a fairly cool summer where we are talking about a three month heat up, three months longer summer, a great deal more heat stress anticipated. Let's go check it out down at the tip of the state here by Las Vegas. Currently extremely warm, long summer, like we know, right? 
And we are looking at gaining here another couple weeks of heat. That's not so extreme because it's in line with current expectations. But up in the northern parts of the states, the states that have enjoyed cool mountainous conditions, this is a scary story. This is a rough ride here. This is some of the most extreme changes that we've seen in the southwest. These are big changes. These are big changes. And if I looked at the um, heat wave projections that the federal government puts out, that is one area where we do see some good news for Nevada. There are a number of cities in the Southwest that are expecting pretty long, serious heat weaves, long stretches of days, over 90, over 100 degrees, more than they're used to. Some of the ones that are expecting the worst forecasts are say Los Angeles, California, and Tucson, Arizona. None of the cities in uh, Nevada make the list of projected severe increases in extreme heat. It's just long increases in your typical summer heat. But that's still very serious. With that level of heat up, with a two to three month increased heat up, you're gonna want more power to keep the air on. And I wanna show you the projections for Nevada's infrastructure. Give me just a second here. Here we have some unfortunate news. We can see here on this uh, map from the NCA that Nevada has a lot of these peach colored circles related to its electricity generation capacity, where we're expecting some um, 10, 15, 20% drops in production. So without an upgrade to the energy infrastructure, generating enough electricity to meet the increased energy needs of those warmer summers, the increased needs for air conditioning, it's gonna be a real challenge. If we talk about all that heat, including those warm winters, that's gonna really increase the moisture demands of plant communities across the state. So let's check out the water outlook. We're gonna start with Las Vegas. Las Vegas, we know that it's fed by Lake Mead. And I'm gonna include a link in the description to this tool that lets you look at Lake Mead's water levels. You can see that where we are now, and I'm recording this video in um, first half of April, we should be near the peak of the reservoir level at Lake Mead, and instead we are at a low that has never been seen before. It's, it's very troubling to see, especially in the context of this historic data. And that low line there, that greenish line, that's 2021. So we can see what brought us into this point. So 90% of Las Vegas' water comes from Lake Mead. We can see that Lake Mead is in a bad place and we're not expecting it to get better. Las Vegas also gets 10% of its water from the aquifer that underlies it. The groundwater under Las Vegas, the more I learned about it, the sadder it made me. That groundwater has just been terribly abused. One of the saddest stories in the nation. Las Vegas used to be this green meadow, this, this oasis in the desert. And not just on a human time scale, but for many tens of thousands of years, it was a refuge for all sorts of life going back well into the Pleistocene. The aquifers under Las Vegas were fed by the snow melt of three mountain ranges. And there was enough water that even in very dry years, natural springs leapt out of the ground. But pumping already made the Las Vegas springs run dry in the 1960s, and the deep aquifer continues to be depleted. There are scientists who think we have pushed this aquifer too far and it will be impossible to recharge it on anything approaching a human time scale. That we have destroyed for tens of thousands of years this desert sanctuary. It made me really sad to read about it. But back to the forecast. There is shallower groundwater in Las Vegas, but it is quite salty. I couldn't find that anyone is desalinating it at this time as they are in Texas, but I imagine we'll get there as the drought conditions squeeze the West. In good news, the per capita water use in Las Vegas has really dropped in the last 10 years. The people of Las Vegas are working to conserve water and nowhere in this forecast do I wanna imply that the people of Nevada aren't aware concerned or working on these serious water problems. The thing is that no matter what we do, it's hard to see a future where we can sustain a city with this population size with the water we have in the area. The urban growth in Las Vegas has been huge and it, it looks like we've been writing checks we can't cash. If the drought trend continues like it's expected to, there are models the city planners are using in Las Vegas now that show water resources will be exhausted in the 2030s or 2040s. I'm gonna share a link to an article that I really liked. It'll be in the video description. 
And it has this video that you can watch for yourself. This is the EOS article and you can see it's 52 seconds long and you'll be able to see how the city has grown since the 70s and how Lake Mead has shrunk. It's a situation where a picture is worth a thousand words. And if you're in this area, I encourage you to check it out to get a real visceral sense of how serious this situation is. If we look up at Carson City, at their water sources, there's a real diversity of water sources that go into their municipal water. That is protective, that diversity, but the extent of the drought we're facing, we're looking at reduced stream flow on almost all of those water sources. And we're not talking about a five, 10% reduction, we're talking a 50 plus percent reduction in the different streams that go into that water source. But there's a lot going on to try and make a water plan. I'm gonna share this link in the video description will you be able to access all of the work that's currently being done at UNR related to the regional water plan? There's a tremendous amount of information here. And one of the biggest takeaways by the group was that the group needs to continue to meet. And this is an area where there needs to be continual active planning. If you're in this very local area, this is an important cause in which you could get involved. There are a lot of folks working on the water problem. There are a lot of folks who realize how serious the water outlook is in this area. And from my reading of all those resources, all of those people are having a hard time seeing a path forward at the current population levels. They're still working. They're looking for solutions and people are getting really creative. But the general sense I got reviewing the data is that this is a really steep problem. One of the steeper ones we've looked at on this channel. Like in the California and Arizona forecasts, as I try and bind together the threads of the Nevada forecast, this is a situation where if you're not ride or die for the state, you should consider relocating. And I don't say that in most of my forecasts. Well, there is space for a resilient future in this hotter, drier Nevada. And even by mid-century, it's projected to be much hotter and drier than it is today. We're talking about resilience potential for communities that are smaller. I don't think the giant desert cities that bloomed in the 60s have a resilient future. They have been fundamentally extractive and it, the bill is due. If you're living in an area that was developed based on assumptions of plentiful water from the Colorado River basins, our assumptions just haven't held out. That water is not gonna be available on the scale for which we built. If you're in a smaller community in Nevada, I'm sure you've already looked hard at your water future. That's sure gonna be the crux of your challenge is if you can get a sustainable water supply. And you're gonna to wanna to get creative. Look into do nets and the new forms of vertical water capture because we anticipate surface water and groundwater will decrease as until the drought eases. That is likely to be on a generational timeline. We could easily have another 60 years of drought ahead of us. It's a rough outlook, but you've got time. As of 2021, Las Vegas had eight years of water banked. The clock might start ticking sooner than we'd like. If you've been on the fence about relocating, there are places with better outlooks in the Southwest. Utah in particular is overlooked, but I would also suggest checking out the Colorado forecast and Northern New Mexico. There are places where we have the potential to learn to live resiliently and sustainably in desert environments. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe, help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.